بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله Tonight's session we will start with Surah Al-Qadr Surah Al-Qadr is a surah uh, about which the scholars of the seer had different opinions whether it was a Meccan surah or a Medinan surah. So we'll leave it at that. We're not going to uh, argue with the scholars. We'll just leave it at the difference of opinion amongst the scholars. And it's a very legitimate difference. Uh, and I couldn't find something that would make one overrule the other, one to be predominant over the other. So I just left it at that. Uh, the name of the surah, uh, according to the majority of the uh, scholars of tafsir, is Surah Al-Qadr. It was revealed after Surah Abasa and before Surah Al-Shams. And there is no particular reason for the revelation of uh, the surah. So we'll get to the surah and the tafsir immediately. <coughs> Allah the Almighty says, Inna anzalnahu fi laylatil qadr. Indeed, we sent it, referring to the Qur'an, that is, during the night of Al-Qadr. And I didn't translate Al-Qadr because it actually holds, in Arabic, it holds different meanings. One thing, though, that I need to bring to the attention of the brothers and sisters is that uh, Allah Azza wa used a plural here to refer to himself. And this is known in the Arabic as well as in the English language is that the plural form is used for glorification, right? As Allah used in various parts of the Quran, in many ayat of the Quran, right? It's all in the plural form to reflect his glory, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, Al-Qadr has, the word Al-Qadr has different meanings. It means measure, uh, precise measure uh, or amount. It means, uh, from the word Miqdar, it means uh, status, lofty status, right? And it also means decree. As Allah Azza wa Jal says in Surah Al-Dukhan, فِيهَا يُفْرَقُ كُلُّ أَمْرٍ حَكِيمٍ Therein is decreed every matter of ordainments. So the, the word Al-Qadr in Arabic holds, and there is no contradiction. And as we mentioned in previous sessions, when there is a possibility of reconciling the meanings, the different meanings of that one word in the ayah, then we will say that it, it is applicable to use all these meanings uh, of that uh, verse or that word. Uh, Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu uh, said that Allah Azza wa Jal uh, sent down the Quran from the preserved Template al al Mahfuz to the worldly sky, to the worldly heaven, al Sama al Dunya, during the night of Al Qadr. Right? Inna anzalnahu fi laylat al Qadr. We sent it down, indeed, we had sent it down, the Quran, during that night. And then he said, and then thereafter, Allah Azza wa Jal revealed the Quran to him, sent it down to him. To Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, over a period of twenty-three years, which is the period he lived, alayhi salatu wasallam, from the moment he was commissioned to this mission until he died, alayhi salatu wasallam. And these revelations were sent down uh, either in response to questions that were answered, uh, that were uh, that were asked or incidents that took place, or when Allah Azza wa Jal uh, simply wanted to send a commandment or legislate uh, an order. Now, this surah 
the event that it's talking about, the night that it's talking about. Uh, if you want to visualize what happened that night, it was the night when the first, the initial communication happened between the heavens and the earth. The first night of revelation, right? Uh, and this great event had great impact on Muhammad and then on humanity at large, on the globe at large, from that moment until the day of judgment. The effect of that, the light of that night extended from that very night and it continues until the day of resurrection. Allah Azza wa Jal chose Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Allah Azza wa Jal favors whomever he wishes over others and whatever he wishes over other things or times over other times. He chose that very night to be the greatest night in the history of humanity, the greatness of which is beyond the perception of mankind. This uh, revelation of the Quran was uh, mentioned in two surahs regarding Laylatul Qadr. The first surah I would like to mention here is Surah Al Dukhan. Allah Azza wa Jal says, Inna anzalnahu fi Laylatin Mubarakah. Indeed, we have sent it down during a blessed night. So Allah Azza wa Jal called it, called Laylatul Qadr, uh, a blessed night. But when is this night? Allah Azza wa Jal tells us in Surah Al-Baqarah when this night is. Allah Azza wa Jal says, Shahru Ramadan al-Ladhi unzila fihi al-Qur'an. The month of Ramadan is the month during which the Quran was revealed. So now we know that it was on the night of Qadr, which is a blessed night, that is part of the nights of Ramadan. Now which night of Ramadan is it? Now there are a Great, a massive difference of opinion amongst the scholars. Ibn Hajar in Fath al-Bari listed 40 different opinions about Laylatul Qadr. When is Laylatul Qadr during Ramadan? However, what is confirmed is the only thing that we will mention. It is confirmed that it is during the last nights, the last 10 nights of Ramadan. In the book of Al-Bukhari and Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ said, look for that night. Al-Qadr, and exert more effort, right? During the last 10 nights of Ramadan. So text number one is narrowing down the 30 days or 30 nights to the last 10 nights, right? Now another confirmed narration also in the book of Al-Bukhari and Muslim he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, uh, He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, look for it during the odd numbered nights. Now, the catch here is what is an odd numbered night? Is it with regards to when the first 10 night, the, the first night of the last 10 nights starts, or is it from the end of the month backwards? Because the month can be 30 nights and can be 29, right? So this difference of opinion kept it open for the 10 because it can either be, you know, from the beginning or from the end, meaning it can start from the 21st or the 22nd, depending where you start and how many nights the month has. The last confirmed uh, narration, which is also in Al-Bukhari and Muslim, narrowed it down to seven. Ibn Umar said, Many of the companions of the Prophet ﷺ uh, saw in their dream the night of Al-Qadr 
to be during the last seven nights of Ramadan. So they informed the Prophet So he said, I see that your dreams have coincided indicating that it's during that seven nights, the last seven nights. So look for it during these last nights. Other than these texts that confirm authentic texts, that confirm something about when this night is, we will stop because we cannot confirm anything else. And everything beyond this is the personal opinion according to the best judgment, which is called al-ijtihad, the best judgment of the companions or those who came after them in deciding which one is the night of al-Qadr. وَمَا أَدَرَاكَ مَا لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ وَمَا أَدَرَاكَ is a question. Allah Azza wa says, and what can make you know what the night of Al-Qadr is? This is a question. The scholar said, Allah used to bring the attention of people to the greatness of this night and to make the one who hears the verse or reads the verse attentive. What is the, the greatness of this night? Because see, in principle, one is supposed to exert effort during the entire month of Ramadan, correct? But now it is narrowed down to the last seven or ten. So it became much easier. So taking advantage of this greatness, which you don't know the extent of, as the scholar said, it's beyond the perception because you really don't know the blessings and the greatness during that night. What is the extent of that, right? Shaykh Al-Uthaymeen Rahmatullah Alayhi said, the benefit of hiding the exact time of Laylatul Qadr, you know in the beginning, it was known to the companions, but then Allah Azza wa Jal lifted this knowledge from amongst people and it became unknown. In the beginning, they knew that the night of Al-Qadr was a particular night. But then Allah Azza wa Jal concealed that. He said, Rahmatullah Alayhi Shaykh Al-Uthaymeen, he said, there are two benefits for not knowing when that night is. It distinguishes between lazy people and those who are ambitious and have the zeal and exert effort. Those who have this zeal and effort, right? and seek and shoot for the stars, they don't care to work the entire month, let alone the last 10 nights. But a lazy person would feel so burdened standing up for Qiyam for the entire 10 nights. He wishes to know which one of these 10 nights it is so he can save himself the trouble of having to exert all this great effort during the entire 10 nights. Another benefit, and it is part of this beyond perception greatness, is that not knowing will make you exert more effort during night number one and night number two, because you don't know if it's number one, two, three. So you will exert the same great effort every single night, which results in what? Much greater reward for you with Allah Azza wa Jal. So, Allah Azza wa Jal is asking Muhammad, what make you think that you will have a perception of the greatness of this night? And anything Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is addressed with, is addressed, he is addressed with initially, but it is beyond him to his ummah, whether as a general rule or for him to convey to his ummah. So we are also addressed with this. What can make us think that we really know the greatness of this night? It's enough honor for that night is that Allah chose it to be the initiating point of revelation when He sent down the Qur'an to the Sama'a dunya 
We will uh, stop it here uh, at this uh, verse, conclude this session, and we'll resume in the following session. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik, ashadu an la ilaha illa ant, astaghfiruka wa atubu alayk.